Assalamu alaikum, welcome to Darwinian Delusions. I'm today here with a special guest here in Islamabad, Dr. Shoaib Malik. Assalamualaikum. Who needs no introduction when it comes to the field of Islam and evolution and dealing with scientism and the current sort of issues that we're facing in terms of imperial scientism, which we were speaking about a bit earlier. So, uh, he is an assistant professor at the Zaid University at the UA in UAE. That's right, yeah. um, he's also uh, got a number of publications on uh, very important issues related to atheism and scientism. So, what we're going to speak about today is he gave a lecture at the Islamic Islamabad Medical Dental uh, College. That's right. I believe. Yeah, yeah. And in the lecture, there's something that really hit me. And I'm, you know, somebody who I think is in in tune with this new atheism nonsense. And that was the link between Islamophobia, the ideas of Western imperialism, and new atheism from a purely academic perspective. So, tell us about that, because I think that was something that really took me back. Right, so um, what I was trying to explain in the lecture is that um, in addition to you know having this repackaged narrative that God doesn't exist and so on and so forth, what seems to make new atheists relatively new as seen by non-Muslims, people who have commented and observed not new atheistic writings, is that what makes them fundamentally new is their focus on Islam as part of their identity as well as their narrative. So, if you look at the works of Ian Markham, Tina Beattie, uh, Will William Emelson, and uh, Stephen LeDrew, these are four authors and these are academics who've recognized that what actually makes new and new atheism is that criticizing Islam is something they heavily focus on. So, this whole idea that Islam is a barbaric religion, yeah. irrational religion, anti-scientific religion, all of that is part and parcel of what makes them new. And this, the surprising thing is that I'm not using Muslims to advocate this position. I'm not playing the victim card here. I'm actually saying non-Muslims, people yeah. from other religious faiths have observed this. Yeah. You know? And you know, it was one part uh, in which you brought up the Iraq war. Yeah. And how Hitchens and Harris supported it. Yeah. And how some academics have said that that is because of their inherent hatred of Islam. Yeah. So Ian Markham, he makes this claim in his book. Um, uh, it's a book on atheism, I forgot the exact name, but um, it's, it's published by Wiley Blackwell, so you can check that out if you want to go to the reference. So in that book, he makes a very interesting point that Hitchens and Harris are so toxic in their rhetoric and in their writings of Islam that it seems that their, their, their very purpose in going in the Iraq war was to kind of get a hit on Islam as well. Because for them, anything that kind of, I, at least as far as I can tell, cripples the Muslim world is in some way a deterioration of Islam as well. So it, it's not, you know, a very far stretch of the imagination to see, yeah. to see that. And you said this earlier that, you know, Hitchens, uh, Harris even spoke about bombing. Yeah, I mean, Sam Harris makes the case that if he, if he wouldn't mind, pro he wouldn't have an issue with bombing the old Muslim civilization out of existence. Yeah. I mean, that's quite a vengeful, hateful point yeah. to make. Yeah, and that's, this is something that, um, you know, I wanted to touch upon, the clash of civilizations. Right? Yeah. yeah. So if you can explain that thesis and how that fits into the new atheist narrative at the moment. Right, okay, so the class of, uh, clash of civilizations narrative is simply this, that the West and the Islam are fundamentally at, at an ideological war. Not an economic necessarily, but an ideological war. Yeah. And of course, to kind of dissolve a war, there needs to be some kind of confrontation, which will manifest in some kind of political endpoint. And I think this is the kind of rhetoric that we see even in new atheist writings. Yeah. That it's Islam versus the West, or Islam versus reason, or Islam versus enlightenment, or yeah. some kind of shadow of the enlightenment. Yeah, yeah. And as a result, Islam is seen to be um, as seen as a threat that needs to be subjugated, yeah. it needs to be civilized, yeah. and it needs to be rationalized. Because it is inherently, intrinsically, unflexible, and cannot work with modernity. Yeah. That is the fundamental thesis. Absolutely. And I think one part I forgot which academic you referenced here, yeah. but one part where there was this idea that new atheism and the the imperial tools of reason and progress yeah. that that's what they want to you know uh, use yeah. over the Islamic world. Yeah. So you can see by the language and the rhetoric that non-Muslim academics are even recognizing this, something which Muslims have been actually recognizing for a bit of time now. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, this, to make sure that we were clear on this, I'm not saying that a Muslim voice that kind of sh shows the case that atheism is very fundamentally Islamic-centric. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that's not, we're not yeah, invalidating yeah. that. 
What we're tr simply trying to say is that people outside of the Muslim faith have recognized that link between New Atheism and Islam. So that's yeah. one thing to point out. Yeah. And with regards to the progression narrative that, that exists out there, yeah. I think um, Stephen LeDrew put it very well in his book, The Politics of New Atheism. He makes it the case that from his point of view of his analysis and how New Atheism has developed on the social level and on the political level, that their end goal is to discredit religious institutions, yeah. scriptural texts, make scientism the defining narrative through which everything is viewed by, yeah. and to make sure that there's an atheistic collective through which we can gain, which they can gain political power, yeah. and therefore marginalize any other voices or opinions that come across their their, their path. No, absolutely. So we are. This isn't just a a wild claim, yeah. right? we are facing a type of militant atheism, yeah. which is more than just an intellectual critique of religion. Yeah. There's, there's way more, yeah. and it's in particular in Islam. Yeah. Now, um, in, in terms of anybody that wants to follow your staff, learn more in terms of what you've done in terms of publications, yeah. where do they find your... So they can add me on Facebook. My full name is Shweb Ahmed Malik. So this is where I slightly differ with the famous cricketer, Shweb Malik, right? Even Better looking. I, <laughs> actually, no, mashallah, both good looking. <laughs> so mashallah. that's one place you can find me, or you can find me even on my academia page. Um, so if you type my name, Shweb Malik and atheism, it should take you to my uh, academia, which is pretty much like a Facebook for academics. We post our publishings there. So I have a lot of work that's coming out in the next few years or so. So inshallah, you can find me there. Make sure you you learn about some of the issues that we're speaking about now, because one thing which I, I would really want to take away and I want to thank you for that talk is that it sets the tone for the discussions that we are having in terms of atheists and Muslims. Yeah. It's not just an intellectual dialogue, it's not just an intellectual ping pong. Yeah. The, the paradigm that they're looking at us is not the paradigm that we're looking at them. Yeah. And that is very important to set the tone in terms of where their arguments are coming from and what their actual end goal is. So, so what, one, I think one more point to yes. add to that, yes. right, is that um, this is the issue of colonialism. Yeah. So it is, I mean, it's a historical fact that we've been colonized We've been subjected for a while, politically and economically. Now, while colonialism may have ended on the political and the on the economic level, that doesn't mean it stopped at the ideological yes. levels. And I think that's what's happening here. We're seeing a kind of a rebirth packaged into atheism that is gaining political and social movement, yeah. which we need to kind of counter. Not necessarily with ideology, but also even good deeds, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, in terms of if you see the direction of how atheism is manifesting, yeah. there is even like something called atheism 2.0. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know, Alan Dubouton. So he mentions that we have things like uh, we should have atheist churches, right? Why is that need coming out there? Yeah. Communities. Yeah. We need to have a political and social space. We need to have emulations of religion to provide a sense of a collective. Yeah. Yeah. So Muslims already have that. We already have that sphere. Yeah. What we need to do is coordinate that, yeah. orchestrate that to hopefully have a more uh, progressive defense, but also an intellectual and a practical effort to sort of counterbalance there progressions against us. Absolutely. That's what I think we need to kind Absolutely. of advocate. Absolutely. And I think one of the ideas that you spoke to me about, uh, I think last year was uh, taxonomy of atheism yeah. and also the different branches. So you definitely want to follow some of the stuff, not some, all of the stuff that Dr. Shweb is putting out. Fantastic stuff. Make sure that you, um, if you have questions about what we're saying, Make sure you leave a comment below and I'll pass on the messages and maybe while you're in Pakistan for the next couple of days Inshallah. We can Thank make you. some more videos. Jazakallah khair for joining us and until next time Assalamu alaikum